Russell Banks, welcome to the Global Conversation. Thank you. Why do you think you are drawn to the darker side of life and to, to characters on the fringes of society? What does that tell us about you? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I, I think that um, I'm writing about really not a minority or an obscure um, uh, element in, in the larger society, but really writing about the majority. I mean, most people's lives have a dark side, and, and, uh, and it's the dark side that controls their life to an extraordinary degree. I confess, I know, I have a, a, a somewhat dark vision of the world. Um, I, uh, I, I like to say that, um, from my point of view, the bad dog always bites and always wins. And, and so uh, it's inescapable, uh, I think, in, in lives. Uh, and, is, is this linked to your own dark childhood? I read, mm, reading a little bit about your family mm, circumstances. Mm, mm. You had a very difficult time as a, as a child, didn't you? Well, I think so. Um, it was in the 1940s and 50s, and uh, my family life was marred and characterized by alcoholism um, and uh, abandonment. Uh, my father abandoned the family when I was 12. I was the oldest of four children, raised in, in poverty at that point, certainly, uh, by a single mother. From a very early age, I felt myself marginalized and looked around and identified with others who felt themselves marginalized, uh, whether they were because of their skin color or because of their gender or their sexual orientation or the relation to the larger society. So it wasn't a huge leap for me to, to make that, um, that sympathetic identification. Is your writing a form of therapy then for you personally or is that too simplistic? Well, yeah, it is in a way because uh, if it's a form of therapy it hasn't worked. <laughs> oh, not even a little? <laughs> not even a little. Uh, no, it's, it, it's, you know what it is though, it's, it's, a, it's a form of um, a rigorous form of disciplining my attention um, and my life. I know that when I'm writing, I am smarter than when I'm not writing, and I'm more honest when I'm, than when I'm not writing, and I'm kinder as a human being, probably. One thing that I know is very important to you is freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and you happen to be in Paris mm -hmm. in January 2015, just after the terrible Charlie Hebdo mm -hmm. terrorist attacks. Mm -hmm. Looking back now, what what are your memories of that time? It was a, it was a, a heinous crime and um, against uh, all humanity, and, uh, and I felt uh, precisely as I felt uh, in New York. I was in New York City in 9/11, 2001, too, um, and saw the uh, the towers go down, and and it was it was very much. Uh, a similar, it was a very similar experience being in Paris at this time and, and, and seeing and, and participating in this, uh, this widespread sense of, of grief and anger um, and fear. You mentioned fear, mm -hmm. and I, I know you very much wanted to come here to Lyon for the mm -hmm. International Forum on the Novel, but it seems that and a lot of your fellow Americans are nervous at the prospect of coming to Europe now because of the I perceived know, security I threat. That's, you, it's ridiculous. I mean, you had no doubts about <laughs> no, coming here. Of course not. Well, we're glad you did. I mean, that's, that's st statistically, it's, it's an insane kind of anxiety and fear. When you become terrified, the terrorism has worked, and, and, uh, and I would refuse to... Uh, to stay home on that account. One thing that is for sure on both sides of the pond mm -hmm. is very extraordinary political times, the mm -hmm. rise of populism, the mm -hmm. rise of nationalism. You're a political animal. How do you perceive what's been going on in Austria, in France, in mm -hmm. the United Kingdom and in the United States with Donald Trump, of mm -hmm. course, riding mm -hmm. high? In the United States, both on the left and on the right, uh, on the left with Bernie Sanders and on the right with Donald Trump, uh, I think we're seeing a, um, an eruption of um, um, fear and um, fear of the other, fear of, of people whose language or skin color or religion is different uh, from the, the majority, let's say, um, and um, also economic um, anxiety. Um, for the first time in the United States, uh, uh, people are aware that uh, 
one percent of the population basically controls the economy. You signed an online petition, Stop Hate, Dump Trump, along mm. with tens of thousands of other ordinary yeah. American citizens and some more big names, mm. Jane Fonda, mm. Danny Glover. Mm. Um, the usual suspects. The usual yeah. suspects. <laughs> How dangerous do you believe Donald Trump would be if he was elected in November? And do you think that's a real possibility? That he could be elected. A, I think it's a very real possibility. And B, I think it would be incredibly dangerous. I, I think that he's a deluded uh, maniac and um, suffers from a narcissistic personality disorder of major proportions. He's a master manipulator and um, and he's masterful on uh, on television. Um, and, uh, and but he's amoral, reckless, ignorant. We can definitely say that you, you're not mincing your words <laughs> no, here. Oh no. So I think he would be extremely, I, the idea of Donald Trump in control of the American military and American State Department, the American economy, um, is to me a nightmare. A nightmare. Yeah. Just to turn to the other side, we've mentioned Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. and I came across this fascinating article that you'll be aware of that you wrote back in the 1980s. 1986, when, yes. Yeah, <laughs> he was a mayor, a provincial mayor at the time. You spent right. time with him. Right. And what's, what's most interesting to me is the way you describe him then resonates so much with how he is now. Isn't it amazing? He yeah. hasn't changed in the slightest. You, yeah. Did you recognize a future president, perhaps? No, not at all. <laughs> are, I, you, uh, are you backing him now? Uh, yes, I, I voted for him, and uh, my... Uh, I vote in the state of Florida, and I did vote for him in the primary. Uh, but um, and I sent him, you know, a little check of twenty-five dollars, so that uh, I could be one of those millions of contributors who, who he likes to brag about. Just to f to, to wrap up, to, mm -hmm. to return to your writing, mm -hmm. you've got a new project just to, to finish. Mm -hmm. um, a new book that's a bit different from the others. Yes. Briefly, what, what's that about? Well, one of the things I've, I've never done uh, until now is write about myself. This book is a, a bit of a memoir, and um, it attempts to, to look at back uh, from the point of view of a 76-year-old man over his life, but really over just one aspect of his life, uh, which is that uh, his, his married life. I, I've been married four times, and, so, and divorced three. Uh, and so it's an attempt to try to understand how that came about. How on earth did I end up doing that, both to myself and to other people? <laughs> and you've got to tell us that first line again, because it's classic. Uh, the, the first sentence of the, yeah, that tells you more or less what the book is about. The first sentence in the book is, a man who has been married four times has a lot of explaining to do. Can't argue with that, eh? <laughs> Thank you so much for being part of the global conversation. You're Russell welcome. Banks, thank you. Thank you.